Pai. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. You may have heard that beautiful prelude and thought, where's Tim? <laughs> if you don't know, Tim is taking a little bit of a break this summer. Uh, he's in Michigan uh, with Ken and family, and um, but he has us prepared for the rest of the summer with our music and has pre-recorded all the music for us. Wow. So yes, thank you. Thank you, Tim, for uh, doing that for us. And then we have our praise band, our choir, who will be leading us in our singing when we have those, those moments. So just wanted to explain that if uh, you weren't sure where the music was coming from. <laughs> I just wanted to give you one more um, little piece of info. We talked about how if you have prayer requests that you would like to uh, include today, um, on the back of your bulletin, uh, there's a QR code where you can uh, send in your prayer request. If you have any that you would like me to include during the worship service, I will check that right before that time. Or you can just send an email to sundayprayers at RamonaUMC.org. Uh, and if you find that challenging uh, to, for electronics, uh, there's a card in the narthex of where you can write your prayer on the back and then just bring it up and hand it to me. And then I will say that so that way everybody can hear it. Uh, so I know that the prayers that we lift up are important. So we want to make sure that everybody is able to hear those uh, online and here in person. All right. So uh, I invite Martha now to come forward to lead us in the call to worship. Christ calls those who are weary and heavy laden. In Christ, we find rest. Christ calls us to bear his yoke and learn from him. In Christ, we see God's ways. Christ is gentle and humble in heart. In Christ, we know God's love. Come, for Christ calls us here. Remain standing, if you please, and join in the praise songs. Eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my, my heart. heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, 
Please join with me in the centering prayer. You have walked many miles with us, O oh God. You have comforted and strengthened us along the way. Keep us on your path, for we easily lose our way. As we learn to live in your ways, help us choose the cause of justice and righteousness. Amen. You may rise if you wish, and please join with the centering music, Just a Closer Walk with Thee.
Please be seated. Let us continue in this time of silent prayer and meditation where you can lift up the personal concerns on your heart. This morning, we lift up a, a few specific prayers from the community, uh, from Donna Shepler. We lift up prayers for Dave Smith and his family upon the death of his daughter, Shauna. We also lift up Roxy Smith, prayers as uh, she goes through radiation and chemo. If you have any other concerns that you would like to lift up, you can raise your hand and then the ushers do have a mic if you would like to share at this time. Let's pray. O oh, great comforter, God of the heartbroken, we come to you and bring you the brokenness in our hearts. We fear the worst for our loved ones, ourselves, and the world. Calm our fears, settle our hearts, and heal our brokenness. You are the God who worked through Abraham to comfort Isaac. You are the God who worked through Abraham's steward to bring wholeness in an amazing way. We pray that you will also work through those around us so we can experience your presence. And we pray that you will work through us so others will experience your divine interworking. We lift up those who suffer from hidden pain and visible ailments. We pray for those in the hospital and care facilities those who are in treatment and recovery, those who struggle with daily life. Speak your peace, comfort, and healing into their hearts. We pray for those who grieve from the loss of loved ones and the loss of hopes and dreams. We pray for those who feel hopeless and helpless, those who don't want to get out of bed, and those who pretend everything is okay, but the grief is suffocating. Lift their burdens and speak hope into their hearts. We pray for those who travel to new places. We lift up those who are taking a much needed vacation. For those who are traveling to a new or foreign land, like Micah, and the Foothills Group who travel to the Holy Land this evening. We pray for those who are moving to new places, especially Tiffany, Colby, and Kyler. We pray for the migrants and immigrants who travel to new places in hopes of a better, safer life. Speak your guidance and your protection for all of these and bring your hospitality to greet them in many forms. We pray for our church, the United Methodist Church, 
in the universal church. We lift up all parts of the body of Christ. Guide us into your ways of service. Show us the needs of others and show us the way to care for them. O oh, great comforter, sometimes we feel lost and don't know how to hold on and carry on. Help us to always bring our thoughts and prayers to you. Help us to listen to the prayers that you speak into our hearts. Guide us to the next place that you want us to go. We trust that you will show us the way. With grateful hearts for your divine presence, always present and always guiding us, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture today is from, the, again, the book of Genesis, <clears throat> chapter 24, verses 34 through 38, 42 through 49, 58 through 67. So he said, I'm Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water, let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Behir Lahairoi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is the word of God 
for the people of God. We pick up where we left off from last week in the Genesis stories about Abraham. Now, last week we heard the story about God bringing Abraham to a place of trust and willingness to follow God wholeheartedly. The original call placed on Abraham's life to be the father of a great nation has finally begun with the birth of Isaac. And then Abraham needed to truly trust the Lord to equip him to carry out the work that God had given him to do. Now today's story picks up further on down the road into the next generation. Isaac was now 40, and he was devastated by his mother's passing. So let me ex briefly share with you the backstory, because as we all know in life, there's always a backstory. So God called Abraham and Sarah to leave their home and go to the land of Canaan. They were living among the Canaanites when these stories happened, and so Sarah, Isaac's mother, passed away at the very young age of 127. <laughs> and so Isaac was grieving heavily. So Abraham thinks, how can I help my son to move on? I know, I'll get him a wife. Now this isn't how we said it in scripture, but this is how I imagined his thought process. I see some nods, yes. So Abraham is advanced in age as well, and he sends his chief steward, his right-hand man who handles all his affairs, to find Isaac a wife. Now Abraham sends him back to his homeland, though, because he doesn't want Isaac to marry a Canaanite, probably because that would be assimilating into the Canaanite people instead of building up the Israelite nation, which he understood his call to be. So he sends his steward to find a second cousin for Isaac to marry. Yes, that's who Rebecca is, Jacob's, I mean Isaac's second cousin. Now in our scripture passage that Martha just read, the chief steward retells his God moment. When he experiences God for the first time, and he is telling this to Laban, Rebekah's brother, who is acting as the head of the family. He shares his story as part of their marriage negotiation, hoping that Laban and Bethuel will see God's hand in this marriage. And they do. But that's an important part of the story, don't you think? That's left out. And there are actually some really important backstory parts in the full chapter of 24 that I will share with you because they will help us to experience this amazing God moment too. When Abraham hatches his plan, the chief steward wasn't sure that he would be successful. I mean, he saw the obstacles in the plan. Why would a total stranger, a young woman, leave with him, a Canaanite, to go to another land to marry a second cousin whom she had never met? How could he even find the right place at the right time to find the right person? The steward doubted that he would be successful. Abraham made it sound so easy, but certainly it would not be as easy as it sounded. So the chief steward anticipates this difficult task and asks, what if she won't follow me in verse 39? And Abraham assures him in verse 40, the Lord before whom I walk 
will send with you an angel and make your way successful. And the Lord does. And it's amazing how it all comes to pass. How God brings the steward to the right place at the right time. And out of all the villages throughout the region, he arrives at the one where Abraham's brother's family reside. He arrives at the time when the young women collect the water at the well. And there's a slew of young women, so how could he possibly know which one is the one? So he does what Abraham would do. He prays. His prayer was also left out of this reading, and it says this from verse 12. O Lord God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. The servant does not know Abraham's God, nor has he any experience or understanding or even a relationship with God. So it's pretty amazing that the steward trusts Abraham's guidance and prays to a God that he has never met. Abraham promised that God would go ahead of him and make his path successful, so he prays that it will be so. The steward doesn't end the prayer here. He gets very specific in his prayer. I am standing here by the spring of water, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. Let the girl to whom I say, please offer your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have known steadfast love to my master. The steward has no idea how prayers work. But he is bold. He asks a very specific scenario to happen so that he will know for sure that he picks the right one. Have you ever done that? Lord, please show me which way to go. And once I get there, provide a parking spot for me right up front so I don't have to walk too far. This way, I know it's your will to be here. Now, I'll play. But prayers don't always work like this, where we put our own agenda into them. God does want us to be bold and to ask specifically for the desires in our hearts, but we can't tell God how to orchestrate it in a way that we are assured that God's hand is in our plans. I mean, we can, but God doesn't usually work that way. The Spirit has its own idea how to assure us. Usually, when God speaks or directs us, we just know. We are taken aback by the Lord's presence in our lives, and that is what assures us. The steward learns this in a big way. When he retells this story to Laban, he said, Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar. Boy, don't I wish prayers would be answered immediately. She did and said everything that the steward requested. And this blew his mind. He was dumbfounded. The steward gazed at her in silence to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. Verse 21. So I'm imagining him standing there with his mouth gaping open, trying to process it all. Did this just happen? He took a moment in silence to take in the presence of God. And then he just knew that God had indeed made his way successful. And it was the prayer that helped 
show him the way. Prayers are the things that we speak in our hearts. Sometimes we verbalize them, sometimes not. We all hold prayers in our hearts that we long to come to pass. However, not all of them will be answered in the specific ways or in the way we want or in the time we desire. So how do we know which prayers to pray? I mean, is everything that we speak to ourselves and our hearts prayers? I mean, maybe they are just thoughts or desires or fears that we don't actually want to offer as a prayer to God. So how do we know what we speak into our hearts are actually prayers? And how do we know what to pray? I mean, how did the steward know to be that exact in his thinking slash praying? Maybe it really wasn't the steward's words that were so specific. Maybe that was how the Lord was showing him the way, by giving him the exact prayer to pray. So he would know without a doubt that this was from the Lord. We can be bold and pray specifically what is on our hearts. It may be the Spirit speaking those prayers into our hearts, like the steward. God speaks into our hearts through our own words and desires. God speaks through others' words as well. Abraham's plan was very specific, not uh, just as the steward's prayer. And the Spirit spoke through Abraham to the steward. And then the Spirit spoke through the steward through his prayer. And then again, when the steward shared this amazing story with Laban, which does indeed convince him that the Lord's hand is in the marriage. God brought them success by working through the people. This is an amazing story that shows us how the Spirit moves. But how do we really know if the words and desires within our hearts are from the Lord? Reflect on our intention. The intention of Abraham's plan was to comfort his son. They were not to ask for a new wife for himself. They were not to make him richer. He had his son's best interest at heart. The intention behind the steward's prayer was to please his master. Yes, it would be important for him as a steward to succeed in bringing his master plans to fruition, but it wasn't for selfish gain. He wanted to make sure he was following the way of Abraham's God. And we can also determine if the words spoken in our, into our hearts of the Lord's by seeing if they come to pass. The doors open without us forcing them open. Even through obstacles and challenges, it seems as if the Lord opens certain doors and closes others. If these paths align with the prayers on our hearts, then they probably are from the Lord. And finally, we will know if the outcome is favorable. The end of this story is like a romantic drama. The steward puts a ring on it, and he and Rebecca ride off into the sunset on their camels. When they arrive near Isaac, Isaac and Rebecca's eyes meet across a field, and Rebecca asks, Who dat? <laughs> When she learns it's Isaac, she veils herself, which is a sign that she's available to marry. Isaac makes her his wife. They fall in love and live happily ever after. Well, not really. That's next week's story. <laughs> but they did love one another, and Isaac was comforted 
from his mother's passing. Abraham's whole intention for finding a wife for Isaac was to comfort him, and he was comforted. When the intentions of our plans and prayers are to help others or to please God, they are probably from the Lord. When the steward met God right where he was and experienced God's amazing presence, he bowed and worshipped the Lord. He knew without a doubt that Abraham's God showed him the way. Abraham's God was now his God before whom he walked because God indeed made his way successful. God spoke into his heart and going forward, he knew the Lord will show him the way. Where in your life do you need the Lord to show you the way? Trust the Spirit who is speaking already into your heart to show you the way. Amen. The steward responded to the word given by God with his praise and worship, and he worshiped him with his life. Now, there are many ways in which we can now respond with our lives. Well, one way is to get involved, and we have this great opportunity today to come together in just a few moments, because we're having a potluck. (laughs) So that's our first announcement for today. This is a great way to come together and show our love and care as a community and as a way of hospitality as you guys welcome me and my family here at this loving church. So even if you did not bring food, please stay and enjoy this meal together because, you know, we always have enough food. The Lord provides, right? Another opportunity to get involved is for the youth. So the um, South District area, United Methodist Churches, gather together at the beach. They call it DAB or Day at the Beach on Thursdays. So this Thursday, the 13th, um, I will be taking uh, Cam and Elio. So if you have any youth, uh, sixth grade, going into sixth grade to 12th grade, who would like to go to the beach and need a ride, um, please contact me and we can see if we can work that out. Or you can just meet us there. We all meet at La Jolla Shores and enjoy the beach and play volleyball and just enjoy the day together. So... A wonderful way for us to connect. Another way we can respond is to dig deeper into scripture and incorporate study into our devotional life. Now, I would like to share with you that I uh, write a weekly blog. It's a reflection um, that sort of begins our exploring of the next Sunday's scripture. So if you ever feel like, hey, there's so much in this scripture that I'd like to dig into it a little bit more so I don't just come in at worship and it just be cold, right? That I'm already thinking about it. So this is an opportunity for you to do that. So you can go to my, my own personal website. It's christygrimo.com. And uh, there's a link there for the blog. You can sign up to receive it in your email if you like. Or you can just go there and find it uh, each week. If you like podcasts, uh, you can also find it on, I have two podcasts. One is called a um, uh, One Word Check-In, where it is that reflection. So if you are in your car a lot or you like to walk and listen to podcasts, then you will find the link on my website as well. And if you uh, miss uh, the sermon the following uh, Sunday, but you would like to uh, hear that, uh, I know you can always go to the Ramona's YouTube page to find the whole worship service, or if you would just like to listen to the sermon, you can find it on the, my other podcast called In the Sanctuary. That is just a podcast for my sermons. So these are ways, and you can find many others that you know that it's not just for me, where you can dig in and really uh, devote time and study and prayer in your devotional life. 
And finally, one way that we can respond is um, with uh, the script program. And as um, the Youngs will be available again uh, in the Narthex, if you would like to purchase any gift cards in which we can, the church can receive a rebate from those. So in your regular shopping, if you want to use your gift cards, so it is a way to respond to God and give back to the church. So you can uh, see them if you have questions. Pastor Christie, yes. We have welcomed you many times, and this is just one more way of welcoming you. Early, when we first heard that you were arriving, we, um, one of our members of our women of the friendship circle, decided that we should have a basket for you to have on your desk with all kinds of little doodads. Mm -hmm. In our travels, we looked whether we were at a gift shop or a thrift shop or wherever we were going, we wanted to think about you. And so we decided to put together a basket and it would appear on your desk when you first arrived. Mm -hmm. We then decided, well, no, maybe we should present it here at the church as a gift from all of us. Okay. And, um, and that's what we're doing today. We're presenting you this here in the sanctuary. And when this service is over, we, someone, whether it's me or someone, will put it on your desk and you can go through it and just know that it was all filled with love. Some are homemade gifts, some are um, things to eat, mm -hmm. uh, and just a things that we think you would enjoy either here or at home. And so we welcome you and we thank you for being here and we look forward to really serving with you. Thank you, Elise. You're welcome. Thank you. thank you so much. I see it here, but I'll dig into it when I find it later. <laughs> thank you all so much. Another way that we can respond is uh, by giving our tithes and offerings. You can give electronically uh, by going through our website, or you can uh, drop your gift in the offering box in the Narthex. So I invite you as the, um, is, this is the special music. Oh, that's right. Tim is bringing this. Sorry, forgot. Uh, during our time of special music, I invite you uh, to open your heart and respond to God and how God is calling you to respond. Right. This morning, the special music is a song called Oceans. As we hear, heard from Pastor Christie a word about trusting and following the Lord, Oceans talks about stepping out of our comfort zone trusting the Lord to be there with us, to be there out in front of us, leading the way. We have some folks up here you may not have seen, so I just want to really quick say that this is my daughter Destiny, my friend Adam on the piano, and of course Tony that you know playing the guitar.
Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than heart you could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Please join with me in the offering prayer. Generous God, may these gifts celebrate your name among the nations. May the lives we live celebrate your name for all time and all generations. Receive these offerings as a sign of our praise, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join us with the closing hymn, Take My Life. Oh. 
see Carol. Carol's gonna come forward. We have a, a tradition here. You know, we, I'm already a part of you guys. I just learned about the tradition. Uh, and Carol's gonna come forward and share um, that we have a, a tradition of praying over um, a family who is, is moving. So we are uh, sad to see Tiffany and um, Kyler and Colby moving. And so Carol's gonna present some gifts and then we'll invite you up to pray. We have two special gifts, one from the fellowship circle, which Tiffany, you have been a part of our church and a part of UMW and a part of the fellowship circle. And there are many, many prayers from that group of women that I love you and uh, want to wish you good, good tidings. Um, this gift is actually from another member who is no longer with us. And now her name has just skipped me. It's Louise Boyle. Louise Boyle. <laughs> I remember Louise. I took over Louise's uh, task of uh, making uh, prayer posts. Tiffany, would you like to bring your family up? This is uh, handmade by Louise. And uh, has lots of love. And, um, you know, Jim and I, times when you will question, what was I thinking? <laughs> it's safe harbor, but we want you to hang on to this and uh, use it as a cuddler when you miss us, which you will. <laughs> then also, uh, in my um, taking over Louise's um, role, um, I've made this And um, we are your family, and we do love you so very, very much. We hope you'll put this in your new home and let us know that we're still connected. This is a special gift. So um, would all of you like to come forward and I think our pastor? Yes. Happy to. It gets worse. Okay, Tiffany and family uh, will pray over you, and as uh, we, as you guys leave, this will also be our benediction for the service as well. Gracious and loving God, thank you for gathering us together. Thank you for surrounding Tiffany and her family with all this love and support. We know that you have brought them to this place in their lives. You know, we know that you are calling them to a new place and that you know what is in store and what holds for them. And we pray that it will be all goodness. We pray that you will show them the way for each step they take. And as they arrive, send people to welcome them and open their hearts to them, just as this wonderful church has done for them. And we pray for your protection, and we pray for your love and your comfort and your peace to go with them always, and that every time that they think back fondly on their church family, that they will feel your loving presence in their hearts. Thank you, God, for always going ahead of us, for going with us, behind us, and living within our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.